Hi, we're continuing to start some videos on some little things that help us make trading decisions in trading cryptocurrencies. If you like this kind of video, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We'd really appreciate your feedback. Now let's get started on the topic of today. We're going to be looking at Bitcoin prices and U.S. Treasury rates. Okay, let's uh, start with the next uh, slide. <clears throat> so. Recently, there's been a lot of moves in uh, U.S. interest rates, uh, even though the interest rates are quite low. Uh, what we have been seeing is a, is quite a bit of volatility in the 7, 10, 20, and 30-year rates. So these are the rates over here. The five-year rates have moved a bit. Uh, you can see even bigger swings uh, in the seven years, uh, a bit in the uh, 10 years. And this is only over just a few days earlier in March. Um, for anyone that you know, doesn't have Bloomberg's or these professional things, uh, the, the treasury.gov, uh, a U.S. Uh, government site, actually has some really good data here that we can look on, a, on a, un unfortunately, in a table basis. Uh, but, you know, we can still see a lot of these numbers and it's easy to find, uh, easy to Google. Uh, and all the numbers are there. You can always download this into an Excel or anything and make, make your own graphs. Um, so what we're going to look at here is is that you know I've been wondering whether these how these um, changes in the interest rates that have started uh, the volatility interest rates since the beginning of the year how this has really uh, affected uh, Bitcoin prices or maybe uh, it might be that Bitcoin prices asset prices are actually creating a uh, relationship where it's uh, leading rates one way or another. So let, let's take a look at a few data points uh, just to see kind of maybe what's what's going on here. Uh, so I took some prices of Bitcoin from Coin Market Cap. I'm um, just looking at uh, you know kind of the closing prices of, of the day. Uh, not really going into too much of the intraday. And I, I look at the uh, interest rate curve for U.S. Treasuries um, from taken from the U.S. Department of Treasury. So so let's take a look at what's happening across the first uh, three three months of this year. So you know, we've had a very big rise in in Bitcoin, but let, let's kind of see what's What's going on? So let, let's have a starting point here on um, in, in the beginning of January. Uh, we're basically um, Bitcoin closed around, let's call it around 32, 32,000 uh, US dollars per Bitcoin. Uh, what we're going to pay attention here is we're going to look at the uh, seven year, 10 year, 20 and 30 year rates. So we're looking at 64 basis points for sevens, 93 for tens, uh, 146 for 20s and 166 uh, for 30s. So uh, let's take a look at what would happen to the interest rates alongside, uh, the, you know, a a current the next peak <clears throat> around the next peak of Bitcoin prices around February twentieth, twenty first, nineteenth, those kind of dates. So uh, I've taken some data on the day before on the Treasury rates, and I've looked at the Bitcoin prices one day uh, one day later um, for the last three data points. So if we kind of look at the um, you know, the, the close on February 20th versus the, roughly the interest rates around the same time. Um, what we can find is, is that the you know, Bitcoin prices have, you know, from January 4th to February 20th has gone up, well, I mean, quite, quite a lot. I mean, if we look at the lows versus the close, we're, we're looking at almost doubling of, of the price. Uh, so we know that there has been a huge rally in, in Bitcoin prices, but we can also take a look at what's happened to the interest rates at that same time. So when we look at, say, especially we'll take a look at the 10 years, um, the 10 year rates have gone up from a 0.93% to 1.34%. So that looks like as Bitcoin prices are, are going up or as treasury interest rates are going up, we're, we're seeing both of these prices going up in kind of in tandem. Or, or together, uh, I'm not going to talk. I will talk a little bit about what I think the which way the correlation is, which one, which tail is, which one's the tail wagging the dog, for example, or is it the dog wagging the tail? We'll go into that in a little bit. But let's let's take a look at the other other data um, that we have here. So we'll take a look at another uh, another high, uh, which was happening around uh, March 20th or so. Um, over this thing, this was all, possibly over the weekend. Um, so we can look at the close. Uh, again, we're we're going at highs of you know the sixty thousands, close fifty eight thousand. Uh, so let's take a look at the interest rates, uh, you know, right around that time. So again, we're we're seeing these seven years go from zero point nine eight to one point three eight, uh, pretty big move. Uh, the ten years have gone from one point three four to one point seven four. 
I mean, we could take a look at this exacerbated rate in the 30 years. Even the 30 years have gone up quite quite a, a lot. So what what we are seeing is is Bitcoin's kind of you know the demand uh, going up, uh, but yet what we're seeing is the demand for treasuries actually coming off. So people are selling bonds at the same time. Now, are these two things directly correlated? Probably not. Uh, but are they indirectly correlated? I I, th I think they're they're definitely they definitely are now. So we're seeing as we see both all three through data sets. I am just taking some points. Um, there is a positive correlation for interest rates and for for Bitcoin. Now let's take a look at on the way down. We'll look at the maybe the last dates, the twenty fifth. Um, again, Bitcoin's down quite a bit from this high of fifty eight on the twentieth in five days. It's back down to let's let's call it fifty one thousand, fifty two thousand around what we see today. So what do we see with the interest rates? Well, what we do see again with the 10 years, it's come off. Uh, it's come off a bit. Uh, the 20 years again has also come off a bit from 2.36 to 2.24. And for the 30 years, we've seen these interest rates come off from 2.45 to 2.34. So we, we do see that there is some kind of sensitivity of, of these asset prices of bonds and Bitcoin now becoming, uh, I'll call Kind of like uh, the bond prices and Bitcoin are becoming negatively correlated, uh, but the interest rates and Bitcoin prices are definitely some positively correlated. So given this, I, I think it's quite important to really keep track of where the interest rates uh, are and, and have some um, idea of uh, um, where or what kind of uh, w where these interest rates may, may actually go. Uh, so I'm going to point out a, few, a couple of things, a couple of interesting points uh, here on, on these interest rates. Um, so we'll, we'll continue with the next slide here. Um, what I previously looked at was just the regular interest uh, uh, rates for, for Treasury US Treasury bonds. Uh, right here, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different to give some light as to, you know, um, to some of the monetary policy, possibly light into some of the monetary policies uh, the Fed uh, wants to um, enact uh, to keep interest rates, uh, you know, at some optimal point, at least in their mind. Uh, so what we're looking here are real yield curve rates, uh, which is basically these are rates um, adjusted for inf inflation. So so basically, even though you may make some interest. Uh, in U.S. Treasury bonds, uh, you know, if the value of the dollar is actually, um, you know, your purchasing power is actually falling, um, then you know, even if you put money into a um, a bond, even though you get the money back, you'll be able to buy less stuff. So there's actually destructive power or, or destructive power to the um, to to your investment. I can say. So if we take a look here, um, that and that that is usually reflected by a negative interest rate. And so what we see uh, most recently um, this year, uh, this started last year as, as well, is if we look towards the 5, 7, 10, uh, 20 years uh, here, even at the beginning of the, the beginning of the year was much, um, almost much worse, where there was negative interest rates uh, every single point of the curve. Um, and this, this is this, this is all, this is quite concerning because it, it really just means that even if you hold uh, your dollars in U.S. Treasuries at the beginning of the year, it, you you are destined to basically, lose, in a way, lose money. Uh, so it's by no wonder that even by the by the beginning at the beginning of the year, everyone's piling into anything that would be you know kind of deflationary in its supply, right? And I think Bitcoin uh, embodies that. So for the fact that Bitcoin rallied uh, so much. Uh, definitely makes uh, a lot of sense from a macro perspective. Um, so we're, we're going to look here um, towards the end of the month. Uh, we do see still see high negative interest rates um, you know, across the five years. Again, the seven, uh, 10 years of 10, 20, and, and 30 at least have improved, uh, improved a bit. But I mean, we are looking for positive numbers here. So, so as long as these numbers stay negative, uh, what 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 it does mean is is that the power of inflation is overcoming any kind of investments in in fixed income in your deposits right in in the real like traditional finance space very dangerous stuff. So what we can expect from this from a fundamental perspective is that for right now this should create a force that is net net uh, uh, positive 
uh, positive for for Bitcoin un until these forces kind of correct uh, correct itself. So uh, this is one important thing to to think about, right? So, but then what's going to happen is as as these inflation products, whether it's equities, Nasdaq stocks, um, Bitcoin, as long as these prices keep keep going, it creates a pressure on on an inflation where the Fed can no longer sit back and just simply watch it go. So they will be forced to raise rates, uh, possibly across the whole curve, um, which can definitely bring on a spate of new uh, uh, new issues in the political arena. Uh, so it's something to very much uh, uh, watch out for. So so very, very dangerous, um, unprecedented times with these kind of uh, rates. We haven't seen this for, for a very long time, at least not in my memory. So we'll, we'll take a look at some historical points in time on this um, real interest rates. Um, so let's look over some history of this, this stuff. So uh, when we look back to 2019, so this is probably pre, you know, a good year before COVID, uh, we see here that all the real interest rates well, was a positive uh, figure. So you were being compensated, at least in treasuries, a little bit to put your money with the U.S. government. Um, it, it was definitely beating inflation. Not great. Not something I would personally uh, put into. But you know, for an institutional um, uh, investors like pension funds and and such, not not a terrible terrible thing. Not great, but not terrible. Um, so we, we can see that there's there's some kind of rationality to to the market. Um, as we go to the, the next slide here, we're we're going to take a look at some other data points. So uh, that's 2019. We could say it's kind of the beginning of 2019. That's a little bit mid of the Trump administration, um, and we can see that there was a little bit rise in, in interest rates everywhere. We're seeing a bit of growth. Uh, we could go back to 2016 in the beginning, which would be kind of entering into the last year of the o Obama presidency, I believe. Um, and, and from there, we can see that basically these interest rates, again, um, are positive, but also quite low. So let's, uh, let's see how, how that, that would go, go then. Okay. Um, once we look at the real curve rates back at Lehman period, these rates were actually very high, relatively speaking. You got compensated to actually put your money with the government. One year, seven, ten years, we're at 2%. So this is right after Lehman Brothers. So you can see there's a huge divergence from, from that time. So what, what does this all mean? Um, you know, Overall, I think this is positive for, for Bitcoin from a fundamental perspective until things change a bit. Uh, so, but definitely something to keep keep track of. Um, and then let's take a look at lastly, real quick, on how um, <clears throat> how a zero interest rate environment affects asset prices. I think Bitcoin has gone crazy, so I don't think it's necessarily a good way to to look at some relationships because of its you know like like ten thousand bagger it's done. So so let me look at like uh, say real estate in Japan. We can see that a zero interest rate has has continually created this upward kind of movement. In, in assets, despite the fact that there's depopulation, the real demand for space in Japan is falling because there are people like literally dying every day. So um, net net. So even despite that, you can see a, a definitely a, a positive force on 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 asset prices that occur. And then you know we end up with, for instance, in 08, a, a huge deflationary like crash um where, where things get reset so so this is this is definitely a kind of a big risk it will be caught on with some kind of event but again we'll find out but for for now it does seem like uh we we will until these interest rates do correct themselves we, we will continue to see a, a rise in inflation prices uh okay so uh that's the um you know uh, that's our video for today i uh, hope you enjoyed it and um you know we'll be back uh next time okay thanks